A, B, C. A, always B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Hey, what's up, everybody? Another episode of Scared Money Don't Make Money. Uh, as always, it's Cam, your favorite recruiter's favorite recruiter. And we, <laughs> and we have, as always, with us. Your boy, Roy. And uh, and today, don't let him say it. He even can't even say it. That's why he got messed up. And so, like he, he, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. And uh, and we have Ike with us today. I'm gonna let him introduce himself in a second. Um, but as always, if you like the content we're putting out, the things we're talking about, you know, marketing, recruiting, sales, management, and financials, just in general, how to be better at life. Um, you know, click the subscribe button, uh, go to our YouTube page, go to our, uh, our captive page, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. I mean, we're on everything, Amazon Music, it's wherever. So without further ado, I, would you please tell the people about yourself, who you are, where you came from, and, uh, and we'll get started. Uh, I'd be delighted. First of all, I'm happy to be here with you and, uh, you know, telling a little bit of information about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is effective communication. Uh, my name is Ike Krieger. And uh, in terms of the way the world is going right now, I looked at a bell curve chart of people that are older than you. And I was <laughs> really on the small side of the curve, you know, here I'm in my mid seventies going, uh Oh, and I've been a communications instructor since the mid-1960s, where I taught in the late 60s at Ohio State University, go Bucks. Nice. And, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I, just learned, I just learned about that about six months ago, just so you know. Well, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, there's the hat right up there, up on the upper right-hand side. Yeah. Uh, and... While I was there, I did a lot of work on communications theories and models, which is just a fancy way of penciling out how effective communications happen. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to use it for uh, making someone like you, how do you have that conversation? If you want to get yeah. someone to enroll you, how do you have that conversation? And how do you write that down on paper? Yeah. So... After I got out of college, uh, I worked in, in, of all fields, I was a, and I still am, one of 2,000 registered craftsman piano technicians left in the United States. Oh, wow. And I've always been very proud of that, but because of my background, I ended up helping those types of businesses market mm -hmm. themselves yeah. in a way that I was learning how to do. And I graduated from working in uh, the piano tuning and repair industry into uh, real estate, et cetera. And I started training people, but the only way that I knew how to sell was the way that I was taught growing up, which is basically show and tell. You go in, you give your presentation, you ask a couple questions, and then you do your best to close the deal. <laughs> and I was pretty darn good at it. I read all the books. I learned all the things that you're supposed to do. And I was able to sell. And even more so, people would come up and go, you know, I got this thing going on. And what, what's mm -hmm. your angle on this? And I started really working as a consultant and a sales exec into the mid, uh, the, the early and mid 80s. And about 1988, I was teaching and training, now starting to be pretty much all around the country, uh, teaching people how to sell in what I call the traditional way, which is show and tell, you know, a, yeah. attention, interest, desire, and action, like Alec Baldwin in Glen <laughs> Gary, Glen Ross. <laughs> it's exactly what it was like. I was taught that, and I was really good at it, but I hated it. I hated every second. I always felt like I was manipulating someone because I knew the lingo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to 1988 and I just said, you know, I, it, it was something funny happened that caused it. I was going through one of my closes. Do you know the Ben Franklin balance sheet close? No. 
where you put, you take, you say, well, I got this piece of paper here and I know you want to think about it, but what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a line down the middle of this paper and I'm going to put a plus on this side and a minus on this side. We're going to go over all the reasons that you think you should move forward on the side with the plus and all the reasons that you might not want to on the side with the minus. And when we're all done, we'll add it up and see which side has the most. And I was on this call with a trainee and <laughs> I was buzzing through with this. And the guy said, well, I need to think it over. And I went right into the spiel. Yeah. And I finished and I said, so what do you think? He goes, yeah. I think that's the best presentation of the Ben Franklin balance sheet close I've ever heard. And I went, oh, <laughs> <crap>. <laughs> you know, busted, busted. So um, it's interesting. I got out of the piano tuning business the first time I heard uh, a, a digital piano because mm. I couldn't tell the difference. And I can tell the difference. Yeah. It was so beautifully sampled. I did not know it was digital. And I said, that's the way the world is going. And I sold my business. When yeah. I, when that guy looked at me and said, oh, I know that clothes. I realized that all these people that we were selling to took the same identical class as we did. Yeah. And they knew when they were being sold to, and they hated it as much as we did. Yeah. So I went back to the drawing board with what I worked on in college and I created a communications model. Mm -hmm. And it was a model for enrollment, as a matter of fact, because at that time I was working with an organization that was really cool. You know, they said the right thing. They did the right thing. They felt the right thing. But when they tried to sell it to someone new, it was back to Alec Baldwin. Yeah. And I just said, no, no, you're out of, <laughs> you're just, you're out of character when you do that. And I put together this model, which gets rid of all of the things that people hate yeah. when they're asked to sell, which mm -hmm. is giving a presentation and hoping they're going to buy, mm -hmm. learning how to handle objections in a way that basically proves to the prospect that, well, they're wrong. Yeah. And then how to close, which I know you like to be closed on stuff. I sure do too. <laughs> so what are we going to do here? Are you ready to move forward? Can you see all the benefits here? Wow. <laughs> let's move back over them again. And I decided to take all of that stuff out of my model. Mm. So as crazy as it seems, there's no presentation. Mm. If there is, it's the prospect giving you the presentation. Mm -hmm. there are no objections because if the prospect is the one giving you the presentation who are they going to object to yeah and in terms of closing you're able to say to them after this conversation so specifically what is it that you see about my mm -hmm. offering that has you ready to move forward and if you're not tell me no maybes no i want to think about it but tell me why you think that this might be good for you. And if, and if it is, I have a couple of favors I need to ask for the rest of our conversation. And that's one, you don't tell me maybe, or I want to think about it as a substitute for no. Mm. If it's really no, tell me, I'm a man, I can handle it. <laughs> I'm a big boy. I'm a bit, yeah, I'm, I'm a big boy now. So <laughs> I don't want to spend an inordinate amount of time uncovering a no that was going to happen anyway. No. Yeah. I want to get no if it's going to happen real soon. Retain relationship, but you know the questions to ask in your field of work that kind of has you go, well, I'll go through the routine, but I'm pretty much sure based on what's been said right now that there's just not a fit. Yeah. And when we find someone like that, how do you set it up in advance so you can say, I love you dearly, now leave? Yeah. Without them <laughs> getting offended. And that's if they agree to doing that. Did you have a question, Ron? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, is, is, do I call that's you Roy? Is that the name you go by? No, Roy, right. Roy, 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 Roy. Father Roy. <laughs> Father Roy. <laughs> I, ju I just learned that I've been pronouncing the term aunt, like in Aunt Sylvie, my whole uh, life. Uh, and as a communications 
genius, I'm crushed. And my granddaughter came and said to me, no, it's aunt. Is it and I aunt? said, yeah. aunt, that sounds <laughs> Those, Yeah, like the word jaunt, like all of these words that are like that, that you don't say, well, I janted uh, down the street. Yeah. So I learned something new. But oh. with this system, it really was a, a big challenge to have people give up the need to sell, yeah. not the commitment, yeah. but the need to sell in favor of just really finding out whether there's a fit before you go into your whole spiel. And then yeah. at the end, after they've told you what they're looking for specifically, and you keep asking them, tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. And they tell you, and what'll happen if you get that? Tell me what your life would be like. Tell me what'll yeah. happen if you don't get it. Why don't you have it already? Mm -hmm. What's going on with you? And as soon as you're done with these questions and they go, well, I'm ready to do it, but you haven't shown me anything yet. I need you to prove to me that what <laughs> I want is what you have. And you know what you show them? Yeah. Only the information which lines up with the things they told you they were looking for. Yeah. Rather than go in and deliver a presentation that's hit or miss because you and your company think it's great, yeah. Like, I don't know if you show brochures and stuff when people come in, but mm. I'd hold it. I'd make them work for it. <laughs> oh. And then when you show it to them, go, tell me what's in this that uh, lines up with what you're looking for. And then they go, oh, oh, I like this and go, so how serious are you about doing this? Because, you know, it's going to be a commitment. Well, yeah. if you can get me this, and in addition to that, what else would you need in order for you to say, yeah, let's move forward? Mm -hmm. And they tell you. And yeah. if you're in appointment-based sales, which enrollment is, this system is an easier way to sell. And yeah. that's what we do. Yeah. And I think that's, I would say that's how... I know Roy and I have recruited a lot like that in the past. We're very like not presentation-y like, like, you know, someone calls, I know, you know, when I, I still do it now, but when someone calls me, the first thing I make them do is a pre-qualification. And I know some people are like, Oh, well, like that's just going to stop people from then people like who don't want to do it, just aren't going to do it. And I said, exactly. I've now eliminated somebody who real, like they're already not a part of the process. But as soon as somebody in authority immediately, exactly. As soon as somebody invests the, and it only takes like five minutes, but that's five minutes of somebody's time. They've now invested. So they're like, okay, I'm going to send this back to him. Now I have to at least listen to what he has to say. But at the end of my thing, it says, why do you want this opportunity? What are your goals? What goals do you want to meet? And then at that point, it makes them evaluate. Why are they doing this in the first place? So that by the time that I get them on the phone, like you said, I'm like, hey, so, and I, I keep it real simple. Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, Macias. I keep things real chill. If you want to do this whenever this conversation is done, great. If you don't want to do it when it's done, that's okay too. What can I do for you? And then they go into their thing and, you know, they're like, well, I want to join because this, this, and this. And then by the end of it, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, this is what we need to do to move forward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's bottom line sales, sign on a bottom line. Yeah. And, and <laughs> That, that's, that's really what it's all about is what you just shared. It's yeah. how do you create a space mm -hmm. in a communication where the person with whom you're having this conversation feels comfortable enough to tell you what they really want without fear of being sold something they don't want. Yeah. I, I and mean, that's not easy. It's not, we weren't taught that way. And when you have sales managers and quotas and all of these things that, you know, if you don't sell, you die, <laughs> um, you know, how, how do you get around that in your mind? Yeah. And, and, and that's tough. You know? I, I think it goes back to that. Um, I remember first starting out, it was all, always felt like it was like a machine gun approach. Like you just, mm -hmm like you just spray and just see like what target you hit versus actually just taking the opportunity and just taking your time breathing and just like because like you said it's hit and miss even if you have a machine gun like 
you can spray a thousand bullets and still miss the target. So, and because it's interesting that you bring that up. I just published uh, a little video today on um, LinkedIn that talks about one of the downfalls of virtual networking as well as real networking. And that's trying to sell to a contact who you've just made with without taking time to establish relationship and in the 1980s i was uh, also did some work in, for a couple of network marketing groups as a matter of fact if they try to recruit you they're probably some of them still using my scripts uh but it, it was really interesting that uh things uh shifted from let's say, for, for, i lost my train of thought uh, I started talking about network market. Oh yes, machine gunning your warm market. <clears throat> That's where I first heard that was oh. that when most people get into network marketing, they go to people that they care about yeah. and are so gung ho about what it is they're doing and want people to come and be with them so badly that they just turn these people off so much that those people would never never take a look at the opportunity and that's where i heard machine gunning the warm market uh, it's it that's the problem we have is uh you know we talk too much hmm. yeah i i, I mean I, I i think it's because the I don't know. Uh, some in so many ways, I think sometimes the old-fashioned way works. Um, it, I mean, in the, the old-fashioned way, is I know as much as we want to go far into the future, there are still some chisel, chisel and stone ways. I agree that have been tried and true that just won't go away. Just because, like it, they just won't. Like I, I agree. Like still to this day, I, I it, it blows my mind that I still get like stuff in the mail with like all these coupons and thing. I'm like, why am I getting this? But like, because of that, like we went to rooms to go, and what do I always get in the in my mail? Rooms to go. So it just a yeah. trigger to me. Like just, all right, we gotta go look at some furniture. Right, let's go to rooms to go. No other reason to think about why I want to go to rooms to go other than. And that it, and I might say it goes back to effective communication yeah. that who is it that's sitting in some room saying, if you put it this way and use this database and send it to these people, we can probably get you a 42% return on investment. And, yeah. you know, and we're sitting here on the other end going, oh, let's go to rooms to go. <laughs> and, you know, and I wish I had more power over that type of communication to a degree but yeah it's uh it's pretty crazy and i'd like to respond to something you said about the old-fashioned way working you will always hear me say that the old-fashioned way to sell works yeah. it works wonderfully i just believe you have to work so hard to make it work Okay. which is why mm. my mm. system is called the easier way to sell it uses all of the things that are in traditional sales but you don't start off with a presentation you do it at the end if they want to hear it and if they don't want to hear it you know you you shake hands and go thank you and they bought anyway because if they want information they'll ask. And that's not something we were taught in the traditional way. It's that you must give this information because if you don't, then they'll never know your magnificence. Yeah. And buyers could care less. All they care about is whose problem are you here trying to solve? No. And here is my problem and can you solve it? They don't care about you. They don't care about what you do. They almost don't care about the uniform you're wearing. All they care about is what you can do for them. Oh and yeah. If you, if you can get that out of them and you can create that future for them in which they're sitting there with their needs being met, their problem being solved, they'll follow you anywhere. Yeah, I think, I think what Roy 
when he said like the old fashioned way, I think what he means is as far as methods are concerned now, you know, everything's digital. Everybody's like, Oh, I got to close somebody on an email. But what, what we mean is that like picking up the phone and talking to somebody and, or getting them in person, I guess yes. some people would consider that the old fashioned way, you know, cause cool. they're like, Oh, I can do this through email, but there's nothing that will ever beat somebody to your face or even via voice just listening to what you're saying because you know when people are typing you know there's no there's no listening factor to it right like no one no one feels like they're being listened to and as we know you know as sales recruiters salesmen whatever people want you to hear to hear them and nine times out of ten people these days it seems like as technology has progressed people are scared of the phones or they they do everything they possibly can to close the sale without ever really talking to the person. Well, I don't know to what you attribute that, but I don't care where you were born, how you were brought up, what nation you came from, what your grandparents did. We all learned the exact same thing growing up as children. And you can finish these sentences. Never speak to strangers children <laughs> should be seen and not heard, heard. <laughs> and uh you know I, I could go on and what do we do for a living don't yeah. speak until spoken to what do we do for a living we do yeah. the opposite of everything we were taught by our parents oh. and by our parents substitutes like clergy or teachers yeah. so you wonder why people are reluctant we've been told oh, don't do that yeah. Don't ask about money. Don't talk about money. It's impolite. You know, and these are the things that as a salesperson, you you have to, and you have to be able to take on the aura of being there to solve their problem because that again goes back to what I'm talking about, that it's whose problem are you trying to solve? And I recommend that all my students stop thinking of themselves as salesmen or salespeople or saleswomen and yeah. think of themselves as problem solvers. And the icon, the avatar that I asked them to take on is a doctor. Think like a doctor. When someone comes to you, you don't say, before I look at your broken leg, let me tell you about where I went to school. And I do have some great brochures that I can show you. <laughs> and because you happen to be selling aspirin, you don't go, this aspirin really works. I know you broke your leg, but this is great aspirin. Yeah. And no doctors talk like that. Yeah. And if you can take on that curious and authentic, cur you know, really neutral point of view when you're communicating with people and going, I'm curious of, you know, why the Air Force? Yeah. You, know, you have all these choices. Let them tell you. When you came here today, what were you hoping I could do for you? How long have you been thinking about taking care of this? What else have you tried? How did it work? Who yeah. else have you talked to about this stuff? <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Questions that a doctor would ask. And yeah, I have a list in my action guide for the podcast with dozens and dozens of those types of open-ended doctor questions because mm. those are really all you need. This is true. <laughs> I mean, that, that is true. I mean, because you're, you're like you said, you're ultimately trying to solve a problem. Um, I mean, I'll, I always look at it like trying to just offer the solution. I, I will always say, like, I am not a salesman. I can't sell you nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but I am a hell of an offer. I can offer something to to where you want it. Um, and I think that's the way to go. But Imagine like, if you could use your offers as bonuses. Oh, you may do that already rather than incentives to be able to oh. use them as after the fact so that they walk out thinking that you're the king of hoot, you know? Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> you know, to, to, not only did he give me this, but you know what happened when I left? <laughs> not only did he let me join, he gave me a bonus. <laughs> he gave me a bonus. I mean, but it, it's one of the things because like, I, I think the when we talk about being so, like, especially to a lot of people, it's like, oh man, I, I can't believe I got sold on this to some people they might feel like they got manipulated or because like i mean that's ultimately mm -hmm. what people are like oh man you you got me into this and like oh you swindled me like you don't want somebody to feel like 
that they've been swindled into something. So like what you said, when they're telling you exactly what they want, how they want it, what they need, and how they need to get it, I think presenting exactly how you can help them takes away that manipulative yeah. thought process away and they walk away happy. In what way do you or have you ever used what's called future pacing, where you talk about the future and how they are responding to your transaction? Have you ever used that? I have not. Well, here's an example of that. And you've just finished recruiting. You, go, you know, I got to be honest with you. Sometimes, you know, somebody will come back to me uh, a month, six weeks later and go, man, you know, what you told me is just not living up to my expectations. And, you know, I just, just making me nuts. And I'm curious, based on what you're telling me now, I want to know one month from now, what are you going to say to yourself that makes you remember how good of a choice you thought this was? I like it. I like it. And what that does is it puts in, in, in the nicest way, a post-hypnotic suggestion. Yeah. Oh. And it allows them once again to be the purveyor of the communication rather than you saying in a month from now, you'll thank me. Yeah. Uh, you know, in a month from now, when you're feeling down, tell me what you're going to remember that's going to make you know that you made the right choice. I yeah. need to know that now. Yeah, because then they say it out loud and then now they do. Yes, it and what you're doing is causing forward action where, um, you know, it's it's like uh, I, I did a video a couple of weeks ago that whatever follows a negative command cannot not be followed. It's like, don't think of a pink elephant. And if you tell them <laughs> what you don't want them to do, they cannot not think of doing it. Like, don't go in the street. Yeah. No, oh, you, you want to tell them in, in, <laughs> in positive, you know, stay on the sidewalk. So in terms of these communications, you, you can really turn all, this is what I talk about, the language thing that gets me so turned on. You can shift how you set your language to cause predictable responses that let you know if you're moving closer to <clears throat> a yes or whether or not you're uncovering a no. Mm -hmm. And you just sit there and sometimes you have to keep from giggling because the <laughs> answers will be so predictable. And that's what I love about modeling because you can look mm -hmm. at it and go, no, no, that wasn't the way it was intended to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's designed to work every single time and it doesn't. Yeah, but yeah, a yeah. better shot at increasing your percentage, like in baseball, yeah. I talk about what's the difference between a 270 hitter and a 310 hitter. Well, it's only four hits out of every 100 tries, but it's $5 million a year in salary. Oh. Mm. So uh, I like baseball too. <laughs> they're paying someone to fail only 69, 67 times out of every 100 times or whatever the figure is rather than 73 times out of every 100 tries. And, mm. you know, the difference is so small. So if you can use this system to increase your work by 15, 20%, Man, if yeah. I came and said to anybody, you want to increase your business by 15 to 20 percent this year, <laughs> you'd Who's be the no? echelon of your whole of your whole team. Yeah. So uh, that's what the system is. And uh, you can find it by going to close the deal without selling dot com. Yeah. And at that website. Mm -hmm. you'll find a link to my podcast by the same name. There's 50 episodes on there that teach the system, that talk about the system. I have on people that I trained in this system 30 plus years ago that came on to the podcast yeah. and talked about the effect that it's had on their business and their life. And none of them swore at me. So uh, <laughs> no one hated me. Pretty cool. And so uh, go ahead. Oh, so what, um, so I know when you and I talked, we talked about how you actually had gotten, you know, you had gotten out for a little while and then you came back. So how was that? How has it been kind of getting, getting back into the swing of things? Like how long, did, how long, how long were you out? And you know, how long have you been back in? 
I retired uh, in 2010. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I was out. Uh, yeah. I went back to my first love of photography. And then in 2018, at the ripe old age of 70, I had a stroke. Mm. And uh, it, mortality said, hey, buddy. And I realized that had I gone to the great uh, debate club in the sky, that all of my information that I had packed in boxes would be lost. Yeah. So uh, after I went through therapy and got better, and that's, you know, some people go, well, that's debatable. Uh, <laughs> I decided to do the podcast because for an aging hippie like myself, uh, mm -hmm. the ability to have my own radio show, yeah. which is, I guess, what this is, uh, it was, if you'll excuse the expression, cool. Yeah. So um, I put this all together and uh, now I'm uh, helping people in effective networking as well as effective selling. And to be honest with your listeners, I would love to have all the money in the world, but I'm not charging for the podcast. Yeah. And if you choose to be part of this entire operation and be open for webinars and yeah. <clears throat> coaching and all of that, all you have to do is purchase my uh accompanying podcast guide yeah. so that i know you're serious it's 65 bucks 67 bucks something like that and yeah. you and i will be together no ups no extras and if there's stuff yeah. later on uh that you need you'll tell me but uh, just enough to keep the lights on and yeah. uh, uh, my wife keeps saying <laughs> all right all right i said but i want to do this you yeah know, all right, all right. I guess, I guess we will. What, uh, so were you still like doing a lot of networking on LinkedIn? Like how, how are you, was, how did the podcast come about? Like what made you decide to do that? Well, it was realizing that I had these boxes and boxes of material yeah. that, you know, and digital material that uh, were just sitting there. And mm -hmm. I knew the effect it had on people throughout the last 30 plus years. And yeah. I decided that there was just too much good stuff, which I say, in the introduction that I decided just to give it all away for free. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm doing. So if you listen to the first 10 episodes of the close of the deal without selling podcast, which is on all major podcast providers, yeah. you'll, you know, just the first 10, which in terms of length, Mm -hmm. It's about the length of a medium Quentin Tarantino movie. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it gives you a feel of just about how long you'll be on there. You'll really decide whether or not this is something that, you know, whether or not it fits. Uh, yeah. a, a lot of us, especially when you get older, we don't learn anything new. Uh, yeah. I mean, most people haven't learned anything new since they got out of their formal education, even if it's guitar or a foreign language nobody learns anything new yeah so uh, and i guess you guys provide a platform for for people to learn something new which is cool but it's almost like formal education so yeah i just let people take this in and if if it floats their boat they know it if it feels comfortable if they're comfortable giving up on that need to sell and just want to have authentic conversations with people that's what they'll learn how to do. And that's, yeah. that's really all I care about. My business mantra, my mission statement is to be the cause of effective communication in the world. And yeah. I myself, by myself, cannot do that. So I'm looking for people that go, yeah, I'd like to be help be the cause of that too. What do I got to do? So I'm looking yeah. for people to use it or teach it. And yeah. that's it. I like it. I think that's one of the things I was talking to somebody the other day and they were, she was telling me how she thought maybe I should eventually go into coaching, you know, since I'm doing recruiting and then I'm learning the civilian sector and then a possible segue would be some type of career mentorship for veterans when they're getting out. Um, not something I really thought about, but I just thought it was, you know, it's, it's obviously something as we talk to more and more people, um, it seems to be a natural progression once you've learned something like yourself so much it's time to kind of like give it back <laughs> it, it is and one of the things that it's important to learn as you embark on a civilian career if that's your choice is that a not for profit is a tax status not a mission statement 
And <laughs> what I invite you to do is look for the biggest problems that you could solve with the people that have the money to afford to get them solved. Yeah. If you choose to remain in the service sector and help people that really uh, have limited funds, then you have to go back to the line and the Godfather and just say to yourself, this is the business we've chosen. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if you want to, you know, set your sights at something higher where you truly are a consultant to people who may have come out of the service and have a hard time shifting mm -hmm. into a civilian career, that might be something that might be worthwhile or a placement service where you know, you're out there working with, with major companies, that would be my, my first feel on it. So make sure you give yourselves all the credit that you have and all the creds you've established by doing yeah. what you've been doing. Mm. Gotcha. No, I like it. Yeah. Um, but so as we, as we near to the end of the show, um, usually two major questions that we ask all the guests, um, so first question, first question being, uh, if there was uh, one major piece of advice somebody asked you when I'm getting into the sales or recruiting game, what would be, what would be kind of like the first thing that comes to mind that you'd want to tell them? Here is one of the poems. It's very short that I have in the action guide. More of a haiku. <laughs> it is more of a haiku. In one day, Samson killed 10,000 Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Each day, salesmen kill more than that with the same tool. Mm. Salesmen talk too much. Mm -hmm. And they are jawboning people and they need to talk less and listen more. Yeah. If you want to really gauge how effectively listening can be as a way to solve personal problems, I'd like you to consider a $6 billion industry. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. A $6 billion industry that's based solely upon listening and helping people solve their problems. And it's called psychoanalysis. Mm. So that's how important being listened to is. So that's the one tip is, uh, is talk less and listen more coming from a guy who's spoken nonstop for 40 minutes. That's okay. And then, uh, and then the, uh, the second question that we ask is, you know, the name of our show is scared money. Don't make money. So when you hear that phrase, what does that, you know, explain what that means to you? Avoid panic management, have a clearly defined goal. If you don't know where you're going, that's where you will end up. And the idea of scared money comes from panic management, as far as I'm concerned. That's when you get involved with something and you have no strategy. You're just a tactical wizard, but with no strategy. And you must have a strategy first. And inside of that strategy, you'll know what tactics to use in order to maintain your outcome. And that to me is the most important thing that most business people miss out on. And when I was younger, I didn't know from planning. I knew from, boy, am I committed, boy, can I do this? <laughs> and then I'd hear something from a bank. Well, do you have this and this and this? And I go, a what? <laughs> and that was deadly, just deadly to a young businessman that yeah. I was not I, I was not clear enough on my strategy to know that tactically I would need such and such a document. And yeah. surprises are wonderful in some settings in business. They're not. Yeah. And if you can, uh, you know, set that outcome in such a way that you always know whether you're on or off course and you realize it in such a way that you can correct because you have this vision in front of you that says, this is where you're going. That's the tip that I would give. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Roy, uh, we have been, this is the 23rd episode now. And um, every guest we've been fortunate enough has given us a different answer to that question. Nothing has been the same. 
<laughs> so ah. very lucky. <laughs> good. Ah. And uh, it, it's good to know that uh, there are other people with opinions other than myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, it, is I mean, because it is one of those phrases. I mean, a lot of yeah. times people will typically say the same thing when it comes to scare money don't make money. But the, the, I would say more so the business side, the more cognitive thinking and more elaboration and in-depth thought of that because it, it brings up a lot more, like you said, panic management. I would have never in a million years thought panic management to scare money don't make money. Thought, pro But how you just elaborated, it makes 100% sense. That's yeah, no, nothing life. is more difficult than oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Yeah, uh, <laughs> mind blown. It doesn't mean that that's not going to happen, but there are steps that you can take that'll lower the odds, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. all we can do. Because uh, you know, from a non-religious standpoint, just remember that man plans and God laughs. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> ah, on that bright note <laughs> let's all make a plan there you go let's all let's all plan um let's so plan. one last time you know tell the people um where to find you at and then um and then that'll be a wrap certainly uh you can find the company at close the deal without selling.com or if you'd like to make it a little bit easier on your typing fingers sell and market better dot com oh, you got two, oh you got two of them oh man you big ball well actually i make sell and market <laughs> better go into there because after the first time once somebody becomes part of the family they never have to type it in again so yeah. that's my test you know oh, are you, you willing go. to type it in you know yeah are you gonna that there you go are you are you gonna type it in but uh roy any last any last words panic management um, yeah i was about to say i knew you like that one <laughs> panic <laughs> Pan panic med management because um it is you you have to you have to keep some things at bay um mm. you have to observe and be conscious of how you respond so you don't i guess over respond or under respond because i i know i i overreact and sometimes i underreact so yeah that that's my little tip like just i like think it. of it as a map and you know just uh, do your best to stay on the path and uh you know i certainly have gone <laughs> <laughs> far over there enough times but uh you know what's really fun and all i can tell you is uh there is light at the end of the tunnel and it it's sometimes a long tunnel long, so man. uh <laughs> Keep on keeping long. on, and uh, if if you uh, you know there, the difference between a dream and a goal is a goal is written down. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, so, I've heard that before. So you know, if if you got something you want to do, just jot it down and put it away somewhere, just so you have it. You've you've manifested it in reality, and you have the opportunity to go. No, I get it. This is the game yeah. I'm playing. It's serious, but it's still a game I'm playing, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, win for sure, gentlemen. This hey, has been a gas. Thank we, you. We, <laughs> we, we, yeah, we appreciate it as always. Scared money don't make money, and uh, that's a wrap. That's it. Don't learn about ourselves.